This is an introduction to modelling the railways from the Port of London. If you would like to know the full history, then you can use this link to find more information of the background of the London Dock Railways. In 1909, uh, the Port of London Authority was established, which took control over all these separate docks. And some of them, as you can see, had their own railways. So it was natural for the Port of London Authority to take over the railways as an entity as well. Although from an operating standpoint, as I've already mentioned, they did actually work quite independently within each dock. So why did I choose to model the Port of London Authority? Well, I do have family connections. My uncle, uh, my oldest uncle and my grandfather were stevedores in the, in the Royal Docks. Um, and it's an interesting thing for me because I modeled the Great Eastern Railway and I'm interested in London Tilbury and South End Railway. And of course the Port of London Authority tracks fit nicely between the two. They also um, operate their own private locomotives, a great variety of rolling stock and they had exchange sidings with the mainline railway companies too. Today there's an increasing number of PLA liveried ready to run models which is also encouraging an increasing interest in modelling this particular area of London. And of course that's also helped because PLA reused mainline railway company vehicles so you can relivery re other vehicles um, to add to the variety. And finally, of course, uh, being a Docklands Railway, it's actually a good source for a micro layout for exhibitions. So these are my three main sources I used for information, together with the uh, uh, Railway Modelling Web, which I'll refer to later on. There is another fourth book, which is called, I think, PLA Railways, and it was published in 1952. Not e easy to get hold of. So looking at the model locomotives that I worked with, um, the first one that came out was the Golden Valley Janus 060 diesel. Um, the next one that I saw was the Hornby Peckett W4 saddle tank 040. And of course the ubiquitous austerity 060 saddle tanks also took uh, a role on the Dock Docklands Railways. And uh, finally, as a new one coming out, which I put in grey here because it's not out yet, the Daypole Hawthorne Lensley, also an 040T saddle tank locomotive. And just a quick view to show my early arrangement of uh, a train, which included a British Railways brake van. On the docks, the stock, the British Railways stock and PLA stock did sometimes mix, but mostly it was kept separate. The um, model of the Janus 060 diesel locomotive um, is uh, produced in several liveries and they also had a rake of accompanying seven plank open wagons. Uh, this is the model itself and it is rather nice. Uh, it seems to run pretty well. Um, unfortunately it does have a strange occurrence because each end is different on this locomotive. We don't believe it should be. But the, the snout, if you want to call it of that, on the locomotive is different on each end. I did not correct this, but I did alter the locomotive in the following ways. I did apply um, etched um, number plates, which are beautifully done uh, and, and available. Um, and I also changed the livery slightly too, according to the photographs that I was seeing. The end handrails, um, there were certain cross members that were taken out. Uh, and a couple of verticals too actually because uh, on the uh, on the photographs I saw the handrail arrangement was different on the Port of London Authority. I actually think the Janus locomotive is, is basically modelled on the British steel version of the locomotive. I also added some fake headlights um, and uh, I, I added the rear light and the two headlights uh, just from plastic tube. I did not try and make those work. 
um, and I'm sure you could if you tried, but I decided that um, discretion was the better part of valor with that one. I wanted to keep things a bit simple. But I did take out the corners. I, I rebuilt the corners of the buffer beams where there is a small handrail nicely placed on the original model. Once again, I think it's more uh, appropriate for a British steel locomotive than for the PLA. I didn't see any with that feature on the PLA. And here's the result. I have three um, and uh, 207 is from Custom House Docks, Royal Docks 209, Royal Docks and or Tilbury 202. They were around from 1959 to 1970, the diesels. And the packet, um, lovely little packet, um, beautiful model by Hornby, uh, hung around from 1943 to 58, as you can see in Millwall. Uh, I actually have two, and it was only when I got the second bargain one that I got uh, hold of, I found out that the Port of London Authority only had one of this particular W4 packet type. And recently, Daypole have announced that they are going to make the Hawthorne, in fact, they are making the Hawthorne Leslie Opera OT. Looks very similar at first glance, but actually, the more you look at it, the more you can see the difference. Um, I am intrigued by the difference in colour. I got no comment to make on that at the moment. I honestly don't know what the correct colour for PLA blue might be. Everybody seems to have their own version right now. So I then, of course, um, went on to get something slightly larger for my fleet and looked at the uh, austerity 060T uh, saddle tanks um, from wartime. And um, EFE had a, a, a good deal going on at Kurnow for $100. And so I picked up um, the, uh, the Longmore military railway version because I noticed from the books that I've got that in fact uh, several or one or two of them not several one or two of them actually were loaned out to the London docks they actually kept their LMR livery um, obviously I had to change the number to be in sequence with what I was researching um, a second austerity saddle tank I got was the Hornby locomotive. So my fleet of locomotives, I have the three Janus, the two austerities, I actually do have two of the packets, but I'm only showing one here at the moment. Um, and that's my fleet right now. You'll notice the brake band there, which I'll talk about in a little bit. You also notice the Great Eastern Railway six wheelers, especially uh, at the back in the background there, which um, certainly four wheel versions of those coaches did run for a short time on the Port of London uh, lines at Millwall in particular. Um, and I'll talk about that. So, uh, as I just mentioned, the, they had four-wheel coaches on the Millwall line for quite a while. Uh, I believe some of them went up to uh, Wisbeach, in fact, another interest of mine. Um, but this one uh, shows you the, uh, the uh, successor to the four-wheel carriages, because, um, as you can see, we have a, a Great Western Railway um, piece of rolling stock here. The rail motors actually uh, came in 1922 and lasted till the end of passenger service, which is as early as 1926. I believe the livery was plain red, unlined red, not as displayed with the Great Western model above. And uh, the only uh, lettering on them apparently was number one, number two or number three on the sole bar. Um, I believe these uh, rail motors were actually quite different though. So uh, you have to be careful which one you choose to model. And Kernel are producing this model now, I believe. I'm not sure if it's out yet, but I know it's on their site. Um, and more details of all Great Eastern Railway modeling can be found on this link. And there is a free document, an exhaustive document, which tells you anything and everything available for modeling in East Anglia, um, if you're interested in the Great Eastern Railway 
modelling. You do not have to be a member of the Great Eastern Railway Society to take that publication, but of course I do encourage you to become a member of the Great Eastern Railway Society if you have that interest. So let's talk about some wagons. Um, there was a book published in 52, 53, and it does mention, um, it doesn't mention livery, but does give uh, rough totals. And 120 flat wagons, 310 open merchandise wagons, two glass wagons, etc., etc. The interesting thing to draw attention to here for modeling purposes are three brake vans, which were only used for the Royal Victoria Dock. And there was also uh, a pulley weighing machine van. I think it might be the one in Chapel in Essex, um, but it was in use as a breakdown van on the PLA as well. So what can you get off the shelf for Port of London Authority? Well, a surprising amount, as it happens. Um, the the, the uh, background is that the Port of London Authority bought uh, a lot of wagons from Midland Railway, uh, probably London South Western Railway, and certainly Caledonian Railway. Uh, but anyway, they can get them, basically. They were limited to use within the docks, and they did not leave the docks. Um, an interesting uh, situation but you, they were able to transfer their loads to uh, mainline railway company vehicles, of course. Um, and as I mentioned, there were three brake vans used on that particular incline. But yeah, I see evidence of five different styles, so I guess they were replaced over time. And um, Then you have the actual ready-to-run pack, which is actually hard to get now, the Golden Valley Wagon Pack. Um, it's rather sad that in actual fact um, those wagons are totally wrong for PLA. They did not have the seven enloading, seven plank enloading mineral wagons like that on the PLA at all. Having said that, you can mess around with them and they actually weather up quite nicely, I think. Um, and I still have mine on display. And now we're hearing that Rapido are making some PLA uh, rolling stock. They are making the um, Great Western Mink into PLA, uh, which is fairly accurate, I believe. And they've only just, as I'm speaking, uh, the week I'm speaking in, they announced a second van for PLA, um, which was the Caledonian Railway Ventilated Van. Rapido have also announced a five plank Great Western Railway uh, merchandise wagon, um, but I am not too sure how accurate that is as it looks a little later and uh, has a steel frame rather than a wooden frame. It might be accurate, but I do wonder if it is because of uh, the conversions that I will show you in a minute that I did. After I did them, I thought they were probably a little too late for PLA rolling stock. So instead, I've actually gone on to get some unfinished eight pole, nine foot wheelbase, um, single side braking, single side brakes, um, uh, cheap wagons, and I actually messed around with those. And of course, me being the lucky man that I am, I bought two of the Caledonian Railway kits, which are available from Wizard Models, um, just the week before the um, Rapido announced this model in ready to run form. You can also get the Mink equivalent to the um, the Rapido Model 2 in the Pico Stroke Parkside range too I believe for now. So I had already converted some steel frame form LMS wagons very similar to the Rapido um, body uh, on, on their one that they did from Great Western as a PLA merchandise and I quite liked them I think I was pleased with them but I'm thinking that they probably were a later type than actually appeared on PLA now this is them weathered up and then I found an odd uh, four plank I know they had three and four plank wagons too so I found an old Pico um, uh, wagon which I added to the PLA fleet and as you already heard the latest ones I did were six of the um, the unfinished 
um, Daypole bodies and chassis that I bought from Hattons before Hattons disappeared off the picture and um, very good value for money indeed. I, I think they are probably more accurate than the others are. It's also an interesting thing that the Port of London Authority acquired a couple of um, pallet vans and um, I was lucky enough to get three pallet vans that were already made up on um, used on eBay and I'd already made one up myself too. What I was even more surprised about was when they turned up one of them was actually, I think it's bottom, bottom right hand side here, was actually an old K's kit and I didn't even know K's ever did a power van. So two of these were done authentically in PLA livery, although I don't know that the numbers are authentic. Numbers with the type of vehicle other than the vans, which are for prefix of A. So then the big study on the brake vans. There were three assorted old brake vans, it said in 1952. I saw some evidence that this type of brake van was on PLA, which was a Midland Railway two axle single veranda uh, so I got a Slater's kit and added it to the fleet. Then I discovered on RM web and I don't know where this picture came from but um, another picture ascribed to a PLA um, brake van similar to the one model I made but with three axles on um, and I did go back and check and the reference picture I have for the other one definitely shows two axles so a bit of a question mark over that. It does look as though it's former Midland Railway, um, but there is a, a similar Southeastern Chatham Railway Rapido uh, special order that's produced for rails of Sheffield. And I got hold of one of those. Uh, and you'll see what I've been doing with that in a moment. I also have an old K's um, and then the R Toad B, uh, which I'm going to put into PLA livery. And maybe one day I'll get one of the Hornby ones, which are lovely models, but extremely popular and hard to find. Uh, with the wooden ducats, that is, because the, these have to have the wooden ducats. The uh, picture on the bottom right um, was a quick snatch I did from a video. It's on YouTube. And I've now discovered that that one looks as though it's a Sinclair X Great Eastern Railway brake van. Uh, and which I at the moment do not know where to get a model of, of of that. I know somebody's done a 3D print of one, but I don't think it's available. So they are the brake vans and it's a study all on its own, just a study of the brake van for Port London Authority. So I got hold of the South Eastern Chatham Railway six wheel single veranda brake van from Rails of Sheffield. And it is a most superb model. It is really, really wonderful. Um, and I then did the unthinkable. I took it a bit. Um, it's one of the craziest things I've ever done in model making, but I decided to take it to bits. Um, uh, as I looked at the photograph more and more closely, I realized I had to replace the handrails to the, the Midland style of handrail. I had to remove two uh, end bulkhead reinforcements with the Dremel. Well, everyone should do that on a $50 brake van, but still. And also that the lamp irons needed to be moved closer together. And what really threw me and reminded me of how much the hobby has changed in recent years is I had to move the chimney and so then I had to move the stove to go with it. So I had to move both the stove and the chimney because on the uh, brake van I was modeling, it was at the other end of the body. And at the time of uh, stating, you know, giving this presentation, this is as far as I've got. I probably should be in the other room lettering this, but I haven't done that yet. Um, but as you can see, you get a rough idea of what I've been trying to do with that. Hopefully your painting's a bit better than mine. So useful materials. Well, old time workshop do some specific transfers for PLA. They're, arch, they're still around. You still find them on eBay. They're not easy to find and they are quite expensive though. And 
there's not much information as to what the numbers refer to although I do know as I say the A numbers do appear to refer to um, vans the uh, light railway stores have these beautiful etched number plates for the Janus diesels which I highly recommend if you do nothing else to your model put that pl those plates on them it's well worth it I found a, uh, a set of lining um, from Railway Mania for a Hudswell Clark model, but I couldn't find the model. Um, more on that in a moment. And I also found some long uh, extinct um, transfers from Champ Decals, an American um, long lost producer of decals, I'm told now as of yesterday. Um, and that particular 532nd of an inch modern Gothic L39 is a really good substitute. Uh, and you have plenty of numbers there and letters there. So what's got away from me so far? Well, um, this is, I think, Brian Hardy's um, 3D printed body and it goes on to a, a Continental chassis, one of uh, Hornby's uh, makes, I think. Um, but unfortunately, I've not been able to lay my hands on that. I do have the transfers which is quite funny really um, and a um, friend of mine Charlie Connor makes this lovely model of a Millwall extension railway 240 uh, which I may uh, go to making at some point I mentioned already about the Toby brake van Hornby is a lovely model and perfect for what I want but not easy it seems to get at the moment so I'm going to resurrect my old K's one and put that into PLA service instead when I can and then Rapido just announced a lovely new fireless locomotive. Actually, his picture doesn't do it justice. Um, a similar locomotive with a, it looks like a steel cab or, or a slightly different cab on it, operated right next to the Port of London Authority lines at Silvertown on private sidings there. So I mentioned about RM Web. There's been a lot of PLA discussions and encouragement on the uh, railway modeling web. Um, forums and they were contributed to very, uh, contributed to quite extensively by Colin Wythe and sadly Colin passed away only a few days after his last email communication with me. So this de presentation is dedicated to him, Colin Wythe. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've encouraged to have a look at Port London Authority or Dock Railways in general um, and um, thank you for listening so far. Bye bye.